Batman is easily DC's most successful character in general, but also in live action, with multiple different film franchises and to a lesser extent TV show appearances, seeing as you can't have a Batman without a bat suit, and seeing as recently both Michael Keaton and Ben Affleck returned in The Flash, and there doesn't seem to be another live action Batman appearance for over two years until Batman Chapter 2 comes out, now would be a good time to look at every live action bat suit and rank them from worst to best. Now there have been a lot of bat suits spanning almost 80 years of content with a lot of different suit inspirations which can vary a lot more than other heroes live action history. This makes it harder to compare between them but not impossible so I won't be excluding any suits even if they aren't based on the typical bat suit cause in the comics Batman has never really had a quote unquote typical bat suit he changes them all the time. One thing I will mention is that I do personally think that suits have generally gotten better over time and the list will be indicative of that without consideration for how good it was for the time. Although, I will be more lenient in the commentary itself, because obviously, a suit looking bad nowadays is worse than a suit looking just as bad 60 years ago. Before we start, there are a few suits we either never saw on an actor or were hidden behind shadows, which does disqualify it from the list because one part of the suit that needs to be taken into consideration is how it fits on the actor and how much mobility it gives them, which is practically impossible to see on the empty suits themselves. Just to include them anyway, I'm going to be raking these six suits as a sort of honorable mention section of this video. These include, from worst to best, the Titans Bat suit, the Gotham Guardian suit from The Flash, the Arctic suit from The the Flash, the Arrowverse suit, the Caped Crusader suit from The Flash, which is pretty close to being a perfect suit, remove a few additions and change the logo to a bigger black one without the yellow oval, and it would pretty much be perfect, and then finally the blue and gray suit which would require even less changes to be perfect, and I would have much preferred he worn this over the suit he did wear in the movie. With those six suits out of the way, and discounting a prototype suit from Gotham and the Kingdom Come inspired look from Crisis on Infinite Earths, as both aren't Batman enough, we are left with 20 suits, some of which are better than others. Remember that this is just my opinion, so make sure to subscribe, leave your own list in the comments, and let's begin. So like I said, suits have generally gotten better over time, so it's no surprise that right at the bottom of the list is the first ever live action bat suit from 1943. Worn by Lewis Wilson, this isn't a Batman you can take seriously, or at least it's not easy to. I think the style of suit being skin tight like the comics works well for Superman in live action. It does not work well for Batman at all, who would need some sort of protection and would need to look frightening even if it does allow for more mobility. Beyond that, the design of the suit isn't great, as well as the logo looks fine and the color scheme is pretty much perfect. The trunks are way too big and look a bit like a diaper at times. However, I will admit the suit itself was pretty good for the time, I refuse to believe that the cowl was, as it just makes Batman look so goofy with the poorly cut out eye holes and the uneven protruding to the side ears. Again, this is an unfair comparison, but this is the worst bat suit ever made, it is also the first. Only maybe mildly better is the updated suit for the 1949 Batman Robinson serial worn by Robert Lowry, which is almost the same suit with a few changes such as what looks like smaller trunks, which is obviously a positive, as well as a honestly worse looking logo. However, the skills tip towards this suit and the reason it's higher is because the cowl still looks goofy and the ears protrude even more to the sides, but at least the ears are now even. Neither of these suits have aged very well, but I guess they were fine for the time. The last one of the really old skin tight suits worn by Adam West is by far and away Way the most iconic, and while it does look objectively silly, I can see why it is iconic. The 60s show and Batman in the 60s in general was inherently very wacky, so this suit fit perfectly within the tone of the show. I will also say that the suit has a really nice color scheme, and Adam West did fill out the skin tight suit very nicely. Looking at it objectively, I can't bring myself to put it any higher than even the worst modern day bat suit, as the cowl looks very goofy with the drawn on eyebrows and nose. The logo is kind of awkwardly placed on the torso and the design concept, like I said, just doesn't work for Batman in live action. However, it definitely fit the show it was on, and it was fine for the time. In a far more embarrassing case, the Batman and Robin main suit is significantly worse than several suits that came before. The plastic or rubber suit design concept of the first few Batman movies has never been a favorite of mine, 
especially with how limited Batman always seems to be in his movements, but the suit makes it even worse with an uglier logo than any of the other, these super ugly defined muscles that take it even further than the typical fake abs as the entire torso is shaped like muscles, or a shirtless man, and even to the point that they added nipples? And this wasn't even the first time they did it, it's baffling to me, they made a bat suit with nipples and then they did it again in a second movie? What makes this suit far worse than the previous one is that its color scheme is so ugly, it's just entirely blue without a lick of any other shade of color, which is not a suit concept that Batman has ever had in the comics, and it does not look good, it barely even looks like Batman. I consider not including the Gotham suit because while we did see it on an actor, we never saw them actually move, but I decided to include it anyway because well, at least we know what it looks like on the actor who would play Bruce Wayne in this situation, and that's not all that great because it's not a good looking suit. This one definitely feels more understandable than some others as Gotham was under very strict mandates from Warner Brothers and it's possible this is the best they could have come up with. The suit is way too busy with the stomach area, triangles looking weird, as does the logo being over the cape. A lot of the suit looks very thrown together and not in a good way, especially with the cowl which is very goofy and far too tall if that makes sense. It actually makes the actor look younger and less threatening. Honestly, my first thought when I was watching the finale of Gotham and I saw Batman was why does he look so young? This is supposed to be 10 years in the future and I was thinking is that still David Mazuz? So that is definitely a huge negative. Clearly made just to sell toys, the Batman and Robin ice suit is a recoloring of the Batman Forever suit we'll soon see, which does make it pop more, but that's not really a good thing when the color scheme is this ugly. The placement of the silver feels pretty random and overdoing it, and this specific shade of blue does not look good with the silver at all. The design concept of the rubber suit remains pretty bad, as George Clooney doesn't look like he could move much, not helping the action figure allegations. This is just a very ugly suit that was clearly just made to sell toys and it's really bad. This suit not having nipples or being shaped like a shirtless man is a plus compared to another Batman Forever suit, but it's such a boring suit. The old gray color scheme is worse than an old black color scheme, especially since the logo is the exact same color with almost no bevel, and so the logo is so hard to see, which is the one and only thing that is better in the ice suit compared to this one. The rest of the design shifts between busy like in the abs or just kind of empty like in the legs. The cowl looks good and Val Kimmer looks good in it, but this is just such an uninspired and very boring design that loses a bit of Batman identity because you can't really see the logo. The best of the worst, the Batman Forever Panther suit is significantly held back by its awful muscly design and nipples because even with those things, it kind of works at times. The old black color scheme, while not ideal, is definitely better than an old blue color scheme or an old gray color scheme, and it does make the muscles and nipples harder to see, tied with a very nice looking logo that adds some much needed color, and also the cowl does still look pretty great. That being said, none of that is even close to enough to saving the suit as the fake muscles and nipples exacerbate the poor design concept of the rubber suits and their limited mobility. However, this is maybe the best a bat suit with nipples can look, just ignoring the mobility aspect. It's actually not that bad of a looking suit. In what is seemingly his last ever appearance as Batman, Ben Affleck is given his worst ever suit as it's way too busy. It does look like the suit underneath the armor would probably be a really nice blue and gray color scheme take on the Batfleck suit, but we never got to see it, and instead are given this weird honeycomb shaped pads on a broken up logo chest armor that just makes the suit worse and is absolutely not necessary. I get he's going on a high speed chase, but I don't know, you'd think the regular bat suit or even the tactical suit would be a bit multifaceted and work here as well. People have been complaining about the cowl as well, and while I agree it can look better and it has looked better, it doesn't look bad necessarily. The real problem is the incredibly messy and unnecessarily convoluted Batsuit armor, which loses a bit of the Batman identity, although I think if you look at it not as a Batman suit, but just as a regular suit, it does objectively look at least a bit cool, but as a Batman suit, it's definitely Affleck's worst in his final appearance. So I'm sure you know by now, I don't like the design concept of the rubber suits from the first Batman movies as the mobility of the wearer can be embarrassingly limited at times, which is definitely true for Michael Keaton's first suit, which does have a few additional issues such as the plastic muscles being kind of ugly and the very simple belt that doesn't look very useful. I don't love the all black color scheme compared to some others, but the yellow oval logo is great and adds the exact amount of color needed alongside the yellow belt. It's not my favorite and I don't think it's aged well, but I can absolutely understand why this was beloved at 
the time. It's a great suit for 1989, however, it's been surpassed quite a bit since then. With the classic Batflex suit as a base, the Nightmare suit had a really good start, but like the Batcycle suit before it, it only went downhill from there as there was a lot of new unnecessary additions, like the leather jacket which is this super edgy hat on a hat that makes the suit lose a bit of the Batman identity, since the logo is a lot harder to see, and I'd imagine would be super uncomfortable walking around the desert. The goggles make a bit more sense for the desert, but it's really weird how obsessed Snyder is with adding goggles to his costumes, which we will see again. I consider not including this suit on the list, but it's different enough while also still looking like a bat suit, so I decided to include it. The Batman Return suit is a pretty big improvement over the original, as while Keen's movements are still incredibly limited and the color scheme isn't my favorite, the torso area looks far better as they moved away from the muscle design and maybe moved away from the rubber, it looks like it's a bit armory, which is a bit better, and while I didn't mention it because it wasn't a big enough negative, the original suit had a great logo, but it wasn't perfect. This suit gets rid of the extra legs, and the logo is perfect this time around, as is the cowl, which looks better and fits Michael Keaton a lot better as well. Still though, this is not my preference for color scheme or design concept, and it was improved on later in The Flash. Batflex tactical suit was a pretty disappointing one for me, as it's the one he wore in the third act of both versions of Justice League, and it just looks worse than his regular suit. The suit itself definitely looks objectively cool as a tactical, minimally armored version of the Batflex suit, but at the same time, the broken up logo makes it far less prominent, as does the darker shade of gray. The ab armor looks weird and should have been flat, but worst of all, Snyder's obsession with goggles is what truly brings the suit down. It just looks kind of stupid. Stupid, and alongside the less prominent logo and the armor, loses a bit of the Batman identity, which is not good. It's particularly not good when Batman is in a lineup of other heroes and doesn't really look as much like Batman as he should, so that was definitely disappointing, but again, I will admit, objectively speaking, it does look cool, it's just not a good bat suit. It's very similar to the Flash's suit from that same movie, which is a big problem with that movie we will not get into here. While definitely the least conventional bat suit on the list, the Batman v Superman armor suit is a perfect adaptation and I would argue improvement over the Dark Knight Returns armor that looks incredibly imposing, pulls off the old grey or silver color scheme really well, helped by the glowing blue eyes, and while it's far too armored for a typical bat suit, it's fitting for its purpose to fight Superman. While still not being able to move his neck, Batman Begins did give Batman a generally improved suit design concept, with the material used looking less limiting in mobility, adding a more defensive look and also just looking better and definitely scarier in general, as does the cowl which fits Christian Bale really well. The color scheme of being all black is what really holds this suit back as it doesn't have the yellow oval to add some much needed color or to really help the logo stand out which is Batman Forever levels of hidden. You just can't see it and there's no bevel to help. I do like this suit quite a bit and I think it fit what they were going for with this movie. It does make Christian Bale as Batman a lot scarier than any other previous Batman that came before, however, it's definitely been improved on since a few times. If Zack Snyder's Justice League never came out, this suit probably would have been a lot lower on the list, as Batman looks pretty goddamn stupid in the cinematography of Justice League, and while I still don't love the suit, I will admit it looks far better in Zack Snyder's Justice League. The suit has a black and gray color scheme, which is ideal, has a pretty good design and imposing figure, but I have a hard time not associating bad feelings with this suit, because it's literally just a wholly inferior version of the original Batflex suit. Compared to the original, the gray is darker, which makes the color scheme a bit more boring. The logo doesn't look as good or as prominent. The ab armor looks kind of weird in comparison to the really well pulled off muscles of the BBS suit, and the cowl doesn't fit as well and apparently also can't be moved, which is a huge downgrade. I am comparing it to an absolute favorite of mine, but this is definitely a downgrade nonetheless, to the point that even though it has almost the ideal design concept, it's lower than other suits that don't. 
Keaton's 30 years later return suit is a far better design than the original Keaton bat suit without the plastic abs or the weird symbol of the 1989 version and a much better looking torso than the Batman return suit while also seemingly allowing for movements of the neck or at the very least canonically speaking he could definitely move a lot more this time around even if it is thanks to CGI. The suit takes the basic design elements of the Burton verse suit of being all black, longer ears, and yellow oval symbol while removing a few of the issues the original have, including ditching most of the rubber for a far superior, a bit of a subtle armory material that they use. The big issue that remains is the all black color scheme, which is made worse by the fact that the belt is actually black this time around, which is a very strange decision. As I've said multiple times, I don't love the all black color scheme for Batman compared to black and gray or blue and gray, so I couldn't help feeling disappointed when Keaton wore this instead of the blue and gray or black and gray suits we saw on display. However, that was never going to happen, they wanted to make him look as much like the 1989 or Batman Returns versions as possible, and in that, I think they succeeded with this updated design. The Dark Knight suit is a really cool reinvention of the Batsuit, turning it into a militarized combat suit, with most additions being tactical, including the ability to move his neck, which is a huge plus, especially since the cowl looks great and Christian Bale looks great in it. The added arm blades are really cool, the jet black cape stands out visually from the light black of the rest of the the suit, and while the design is definitely very messy, I think the bumps and lines and changing shades of black, some verging on grey, help greatly with the less than ideal all black color scheme that the suit would otherwise have. I will say the logo is pretty small and hard to see, which in combination with the reinvention of the bat suit design, makes the suit lose a bit of the bat identity. Not enough however for me to dislike it, I think it looks really cool, Batman definitely looks very frightening in this movie, and it's pulled off off well as a more realistic reinvention of the Batsuit. So there's a huge jump here, like basically from B tier to S tier, as Robert Pattinson's Batsuit is perfect in what he was trying to be, with a really nice black and grey color scheme, this is a fantastic adaptation of the Earth One style Batsuit, with it looking a bit more thrown together, in a good way this time, relatively armored look with a lot of visible gadgets which works well for this year 2 Batman. The Bat symbol is really cool and unique as it seems to have been made from a gun and acts also as a battering. The cowboy looks incredible, seemingly inspired by Daredevils from his show, his stitched together look, with full neck moving capabilities and zero hindrance on Robert Pence's performance. The torso looks really cool, the cape looks great, everything about the suit is so cool, with the only stipulation being that I just prefer a more cloth based suit over an armored suit, even if that is what works for this movie. And because of that, that brings us to number one. In terms of design, a live action Batman peaked in 2016 as Batflex appearances in both BVS and Suicide Squad that year came with the best ever live action Batsuit with a perfect black and grey color scheme with the particular shade of grey being lighter, working perfectly to help the black sections pop, with the huge logo making the bat on the suit more prominent than ever, that's so clearly Batman. The cowl looks perfectly fitting and really cool with full neck moving capabilities and if we're talking about moving capabilities, this suit is limitless, it seems like Batman was able to move around with no problem. I absolutely love the mix of cloth, leather, and what seems like I guess Kevlar, which strikes the perfect balance between the comic book look and the real world application of what Batman should be, with the muscle suit inside looking so natural because of how jacked Ben Affleck was at the time, which makes for the single most imposing and scariest Batman ever put to screen, because he was huge, but also he could move really quickly. The only problem I have with the suit is that the belt I guess could have been yellow, but that's really easy to dismiss. The BVS suit is a perfect adaptation and improvement over the Dark Knight Returns suit, while also, ironically speaking, being the closest to a typical comic bat suit we've gotten in the modern day, and when I say typical comic bat suit, I mean a modern day bat suit. This is the perfect live action adaptation.